How is everybody doing today? My name is Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. We're back today and we are continuing our Battle of the Bourbon series to determine the best single barrel bourbon on the market. So for those of you that have not been following the series, what we're doing is a series of blind tastings to bring us to our final four where we're going to do a blind tasting to determine the best single barrel out there. So we've already had four rounds, you know, started with our Sweet 16. We're now on to the Elite 8. So we've got the Elite 8, we're going to be doing two more blind tastings and then we're going to have our final four. Now this blind tasting here could be um, either of the two flights. So I don't know which bracket, which side Mrs. Bourbon Saint chose. So you know I know what the eight whiskeys are, but I don't know um, what's going to be in this flight specifically. So let's do a quick shuffle. You know, shuffle these around so you don't think I'm cheating as usual. All right, that's all shuffled up enough. Um, I'm not cheating anyway. I mean, I could obviously cut away and just do whatever I wanted to and look at the numbers and stuff, but. You know, I'm not a sleaze bag, so we're not gonna do that, but got my water ready, got the results right next to me. Let's go right into sample number one here and see what we get. Ooh, this is um this has got a nice fruitiness to it. Um you know the fruitiness again is like kind of that banana, a little bit of banana coming through. Definitely um, brown sugar, vanilla, a lot of vanilla coming through on this for me. Really good nose. I mean, really good nose. Proof doesn't smell um, doesn't smell that hot. We'll see. A very desserty, desserty nose for sure. Mmm. That's nice. It is, it's like dessert in a glass. Um, you know, proof is probably around the 90, 90-ish, I'm guessing on that. Doesn't drink that hot. Not a huge amount of oak. Really, really nice um, fruitiness though. You know, like the vanilla, the caramel dessert, you know, and that banana, it's like a banana's foster coming through. Nice flavor. I can definitely see why that advanced to this round. All right, sample number two. All right, on nose, this um, gives me more of a punch um, than the than sample number one. Definitely say it's probably um, probably higher proof than sample number one, if I was guessing. More nuttiness comes through on this. Um, also, like a cherry sweetness almost is what I would describe. Hmm. Yeah, it's like a toasted almost like a toasted walnut or something like that. Nice baking spices. I mean, it's got nice spice on the back of the nostrils telling me it's probably either something a little bit higher proof or rye, one of the two. Really nice. Hmm. You know, it doesn't drink super hot. I was anticipating a lot more bite on the palate, but probably around 100 proof on this one. Um, rye spice is coming through though, like that rye spice on the back of the palate give me a nice tingle, decent mouthfeel, but the, the back of the palate where it's giving you that little tingle on the taste buds is nice. Flavors hold true from the nose, what I was describing, kind of that toasted nut, you know, slight oak, but a lot of baking spices. Um, really nice pour, really nice pour and easy to drink, like I could, I could kill that stuff all night. All right, sample number three. Ooh. Um, hmm. Proof, I mean, proof seems similar to sample number two, actually. So does the flavor profile. A lot of those same notes I was just describing, kind of that sit orange, orange citrus. Um, the rye is coming through again on the nose. Not a huge amount, but this, I'd say this probably has a little bit more burn to me. Um, I think a little bit more burn than what I was anticipating. Mm. Well, hmm. Well, proof drinks even lower than sample number two. Um, you know, I think two, being the similar flavor profile on these, two was more amplified on kind of every level. Yeah, 
Yeah. Two's got a little like am- more amplified nose. Had a better mouthfeel, better finish. Nothing's wrong with three here at all, though, either. That's a really good flavor profile. Um, I mean, I could... Another one that's easy sipping. Like, easy sipping. Um, this is probably around 100 proof, like I said. I think maybe this one's about 105. It drinks a little bit hotter, so... Let me one more sip on this one. Really good flavor profile. Um, second half of the palate, like the, the medium center to back of the palate, I don't like the mouthfeel and finish as much as two. So, so far I'm leaning for two over three on uh, first time through. All right, sample number four. Ooh, this one smells like it's got more uh, more proof. It's um, <laughs> It smells a little proofier. Yeah, um, it's more of a, uh, almost like a bitter dry drying oak on the nose. Not a huge amount of rye spice, but um, it, it's more of the alcohol burn, you know. This one is one you should probably leave the, the cap off and let it open up for a while. I did leave the caps off on all these for about 10 minutes before I um, went, in, went into them, so. Nice, though. Um, slight, I mean, it's it's baking spice. It's a lot of baking spices, a lot of amplified notes because of, I think, the proof. You know, it's really smelling hotter, so. Woo! Drinking hotter, too. Hmm. So it's just sticking to the side of the palate, which is wonderful. You know, that's that, that's that proof. Sticking to the side of the palate, the front of the palate gives you an explosion of those baking spices and um, tingle on the front, you know, from the alcohol content. Really, really, really good. Um, that's nice. The finish actually shell- fell a little short for being so high proof. I am getting a nice Kentucky hug, but not the best finish, actually, surprisingly. Um, nothing to, to like, snare at. That's, that's really good stuff, too. First time through, honestly, I could take any of these to win or any of these to lose. Um, they're all very close. This is why we're on the Elite Eight, I guess. Let me take about 10 minutes. I'll rest the palate, drink some water. We'll come back and we'll see if round two changes anything. All right, everyone, we are back. I took some time there, left the tops off, um, let them open up a little bit. Let's get back into this. We'll, we'll work one back to four this time, or four back to one. And we'll see if the order changes anything. It usually does. So, definitely better nose than the first time through. I mean, less alcohol burn. Taking those 10 minutes, I think, helped open it up a little bit. Getting a lot more cinnamon now coming through on this for some reason. And when I think cinnamon, I think like Knob Creek, you know, a lot of Knob Creek store picks are kind of that Jim Beam higher proofed profile. Um, the, the bitter oak is still coming through for me a little bit. It's kind of like an, an honestly, like a little off-putting bitter oak note for me. I don't, I don't know. Proof can cover up a lot of flaws. You know, you got to be careful with high proof stuff because it can cover up flaws in a whiskey. And, um, I don't know. Like, like bitter oak for me is one of those notes that usually sticks out and I don't enjoy it. If I'm getting barrel char, that's different. But if it's a bitter oak, it's just off-putting for my palate. The explosion of flavor and baking spice on the front of the palate is wonderful. My mouth's salivating right now. Helps so much. The proof helps so much. We're going to have to do a barrel proof Battle of the Bourbon series. We're going to have to because that's going to be damn near impossible to pick a winner, but that'll be fun. Let me know if you want to see that episode, please. Um, really nice. You know, the bitter oak is better. It's not there as much on the palate now. It was very strong first time through, second time through. Much better. So this this is probably going to fare pretty high in this lineup. All right, sample number two. You know, two and three, it's just... They're so similar to me. Two has got a much more amplified nose than three. It's much more deep and much more complex than um, than sample three to me. They're very similar. They are. I mean, very similar flavor profiles, but 
Two is still, it smells really good. Like I said, this is one I could just smell all day, sip all day. Wonderful front to center of the palate. You know, great citrus, orange peel, that rye spice comes through even a little bit on the front of the palate, which doesn't happen often. Center to back of the palate though, it's kind of just falls flat. Quick finish, not a huge mouth coating. So a good pour, like it's still a very good pour. I understand why it's in the Elite Eight for sure. But in this lineup, like compared to two, I think it's gonna be um, maybe fall a little short. All right, on to sample number two. It, it just smells more deep, you know, more deep, more rich, more complex, probably a little more age, I'd say too. Proof, I mean, proof is sm like snozing very similar between two and three though. I think I'm being tricked because three is giving me more of like that rye spice and alcohol burn a little bit, whereas this is more just that, those rich, delicious bourbon flavors you love coming out of the Glen. That's a nice nose. You know, it might be weird to say, but like comparing two to three, it seems like this sample is like non-chill filter. Like you're getting a way better mouth coating, way better finish. It, it almost makes me think the proof is higher just because of the better mouth coating, the better finish. The, the richness of the flavors is much more pronounced in two than three. And a lot of times that richness of flavors, like things like an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, things that are non-chill filtered, it just gives me those amplified notes and it's wonderful. Uh, wonderful flavor on two, that's, that's gonna be tough to beat. All right, back to sample number one. Really, really nice nose on this too. Man, this is so desserty. Like it's just so much dessert in a glass. I mean, it's like a banana flavored ice cream is what this smells like. The, the nose, I mean, I really have to stick my nose down in the glen to get something out of it. But it's really, really nice baking spices, the clove, allspice, nutmeg, along with the, those fruity notes like that banana. It's, let's give it a sip. I love the flavor on that. I love the flavor on that. I don't know what it is. Um, it's underproofed, I'll say. I don't know if that's the right word. It's, it's, it tastes like it's proofed down. Like if, if this was non-chill filtered or just amplified in proof, this would be winning this flight probably because I love the flavor profile of that, whatever that is. Really, really nice. Desserty. It's, um, if you're new to bourbon, this is like one you would introduce someone to. It's just, <laughs> it's so easy to drink, I feel like. So this, uh, this is a tough, a tough flight. There's a lot of really good options here. I don't know how I'm going to pick two. This is, this is going to be difficult. So let me take a couple more minutes. I'll figure out my, my order, my lineup, and we'll find out what we got. Stay tuned, guys. All right, I've got my order. Took some time there. I think I have my favorite two. Very difficult lineup, very difficult. Uh, like I said, any of these could have won, could have lost. So let's go right into my fourth choice. <sighs> this was so tough. This is sample number two. Got my results. Let's see what sample number two is. Sample number two is Kentucky Spirit. Okay, so that kind of gives me an idea of what these other ones might be now that I know which lineup I'm doing. Um, Kentucky Spirit, just a phenomenal bottle. I mean, it really is. Um, this pick I have is really good. I think that's why I moved on. This is a Liquor Barn, Mr. Bruce's Neighborhood pick. Wonderful, um, wonderful bottle. Value, this is a little bit pricier, you know, $50, $60, honestly, for Kentucky Spirit pick. At that price, I would rather go for a Russell's pick usually for me. So, but it's tough. If you buy this, this is like way easy to sip, way easy to drink. I had this out by the fire the other night and it was phenomenal. Um, you will not be disappointed with probably most Kentucky Spirit picks that you end up getting. Ugh. All right, number three, sample number four, 
which is Old Forester Single Barrel. Oh, I forgot that those forgot that was in this lineup. But it's yeah, it's incredibly desserty. Um, do I have that one here? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful bottles and sing, for, Old Forester Single Barrels are some of my favorite picks out there. Honestly, they are. I say that about a lot of picks, but it's just true. Um, Old Forester does a phenomenal job with their whiskey. I can't find a bad Old Forester product. I cannot wait to finally be able to try an Old Forester Barrel Proof. I cannot wait till those come out, and I really, really need to get one, so I hope they, I, I can get my hands on one at some point. Um, another one, $45, state minimum here in Michigan. Worth every penny. It's worth every penny, you know, for sure. If it made it as number six of all the single barrels out there, that's pretty good. Leaves our final two here. Sample number two, this was tough between one and two, um, but the bitter oak, you know, still great mouth coating, great explosion of flavor in the front of the palate, that's why for number two. So that was sample number one. Sample number one was Jack Daniels Barrel Proof. Okay. All right. Well, this will get a chance to redeem itself in the finals because it's moving on. Um, I'm a proof whore. I wish I wasn't. Like, I wish I wasn't, but I just am. Proof makes all the difference. Like I said, there were some flaws in this whiskey, but overall that bitter note, it was, you know, the, the positives outweighed the negatives on this. We got some of that, a huge explosion of flavor. Finish, although it dried out in the first time through, the second time through it was much more creamy, much more rich. Not as much that drying red wine note that uh, ADHD whiskey always calls out. $60, by the way, 2019 Whiskey Awards. This was one of my most underrated whiskeys out there. And it is, especially the store picks. Sample number one is Russell's Reserve. All right, there you go. Not surprised, as I mentioned, some of my favorite picks out there for good reason. Um, $60 price point, non-chill filtered, 110 proof. All the different aging locations and warehouse locations and floors and everything else. I mean, you can get so much variety. I've always said Russell's picks are the biggest variety picks out there. You know, Buffalo Trace, they're all pretty similar to me, in my opinion, the ones I've had at least. They're similar in flavor profile. You can kind of tell it's a Buffalo Trace pick. Russell's picks, I've had some super funky ones where it's like, that is not wild turkey at all. Like, what is that? Um, and that's awesome. You know, as a bourbon enthusiast, a whiskey enthusiast, I love the variation in picks and options. And Russell's delivers nine times out of 10. So, phenomenal lineup. Um, a lot of fun. Now we've got our two whiskeys moving on to the final, final four. One more blind coming up next Saturday. Make sure you're there. A couple brand new updates to Bourbon Sane. I just launched a website. So bourbonsane.com. I'm going to be selling my merchandise out of there. I'm actually going to be doing weekly whiskey reviews and news blog style um, type reviews episodes. So please do check it out. Let me know what you think. I actually just put out a Larceny Barrel Proof review and um, I hope you enjoy it. You know, I really wanted to start writing some reviews as well. I'm also going to be putting out a video of the Larceny Barrel Proof review too. So I want to do videos and written reviews both. So it's going to be a weekly blog. Um, I hope you guys all follow it. If you do want to, please do put your name and email address in there. You'll be notified when I drop a new YouTube video and when I drop a new uh, written review. So if you're interested in that, please do uh, join the channel. I also want to thank all my brand new patrons. I've had a lot of brand new patrons late, lately and it means a lot. It really does. Uh, best way to support the channel. You guys are awesome. I've got some sample packs going out to my patrons very soon already and um, even a bottle or two. So thank you all for coming and watching this episode today. I'll see you all uh, very soon next week, next Saturday. We'll find out what our final four is going to be and we will have our finals. Thank you all for being here. Stay insane, everyone.